In this video lecture, we're going to do a quick refresher on the idea of variable scope within blocks, specifically the scope of variables in selection blocks. Okay, let's get started. Block scope is an idea that we've already discussed, but now we need to extend it to selection. As a refresher, block scope simply refers to the extent or region of a program in which some variable can be referenced. In other words, where can a particular variable be seen or used by other code? We've already talked about block scope in other contexts. For example, we mentioned in passing previously that classes contain data, so within the block that represents a class is one type of scope. By this point, we've written several short programs, each containing a required main method. We already know that the interface of the main method is followed by the open and closed curly braces of a block, and that when we define variables up front, those variables can be used throughout the remainder of that program. This is actually another type of block scope. When we talked about methods, we said that any variables defined within that method were local to or confined to that method. No code outside that method can see or use such variables. This is yet another type of block scope. Now to this list, we must add the true and false blocks of any type of selection structure. The common thread in all these examples is the presence of some kind of statement block. Remember that when we refer to a block, we're really just talking about a pair of open and closed curly braces and all the program real estate between them. So the scope of any program variable extends from the point at which it's declared inside of some block to the end of the block inside which it was declared. Put in other terms, a variable is only visible and usable inside the braces of the innermost block in which it was declared. If we want to access some variable from outside a block, that variable must also be declared outside that block as well. By declaring all of our variables near the beginning of our program, or at the beginning of any of our methods, such as the main method, we ensure that those variables are visible throughout the remainder of that particular block, and we help avoid such problems as these in the first place. Let's take a look at an example of block scope and how it pertains to selection. Here's an example of block scope within an if-else structure. In this example, we're declaring some numerical passing threshold as a constant, prompting the user for a test score using a static method from our new utils class, then assigning a pass, no pass grade based on that score. When we try to compile this code as shown, we're going to get two compiler errors about cannot find symbol. That's because we're trying to print a message using this letter grade variable, but because it's defined inside these innermost braces of the if case, this variable can't be seen outside of that block scope. Furthermore, even though we know that we mean for these letter grades to be one and the same variable, they are completely separate variables. And the second one doesn't know anything about the declaration of this other one inside this if block. If we really want to use a variable down here that's initialized like this inside these if and else blocks, that variable needs to be declared one level higher at some common level inside this outermost block defined by the main method. By declaring the variable here instead, now its scope is everywhere inside the main method, including both the if and else blocks, as well as afterwards in this print statement. But Declaring variables like this near the beginning of our program is where we should be declaring them anyway, is good practice. To see how this code fails and how to correct it, please view the next short code walkthrough video for selectionscope.java. Open up this file in JGraph so you can follow along. You'll find this example in the usual place. To sum up, if you get in the habit of declaring your variables at the beginning of all your programs and methods, you can largely bypass any problems such as these involving block scope. 